Hello. So as part of the network security module, it makes sense that we need to know a little bit about networking. Now, I know some people will have a bit of background knowledge uh, already, but it's a good idea to have a bit of a play around with a networking simulator. Obviously, especially since we're remote for this uh, this week, it's very difficult to actually work with real network hardware. And in fact, even if you were studying for a networking certification, you'd actually be using a simulator. So let's use a networking simulator because that will allow us to uh, understand in more detail exactly how a network operates. So I asked you to uh, get installed uh, Phileas. Uh, now, this is my work laptop. Even I can't install it on my own work laptop, so I had to put a support uh, ticket um, support ticket in. So, uh, so let me just load up Phileas. There we go. So, Phileas is quite a basic networking tool, although it's, it it has um, you know quite a few like slightly advanced pieces of functionality. Certainly enough for what we need for this network security module. If you were wanting to study uh, the Cisco Certified Network Networking Associate uh, certification then you would need to use a simulator tool, which is a bit more advanced. Uh, and so the more advanced version would be Cisco's Packet Tracer, which is obviously made by Cisco. And that is much more advanced, much more complicated, um, totally overboard for what we need for this week, uh, and also uh, much more difficult to support remotely as well. So you can see Phileas is loaded up. I'll just make it full screen there. And uh, we've got some very basic options down the left-hand side. So uh, Phileas doesn't even uh, worry about uh, wireless networking technologies. It uses cables for everything. But that's okay because it doesn't really matter about uh, what uh, actual physical medium we're using, whether we're using a cable or a wireless. It's the networking principles are essentially all of the same because of the way that the OSI model uh, sort of like all interlinks and all works together. So we've got these different networking devices down the side. And we've got cable, computer, notebook, switch, home router, router, and modem. Now, we won't necessarily be having to use all of these. So let me just uh, build a, a very simple, basic network. So uh, I'll just drag out a computer. There's actually no real difference between sort of like the notebook and the uh, sort of like desktop computer, if you like. This is like a tower case. Um, so, But it just allows you to sort of like use one or the other. It doesn't really matter. So let me just drag out a notebook there. So I just clicked and dragged to drag them out. And you can see that as I sort of change which one I've got selected, it sort of sh uh, changes the options down here at the bottom. I'll just hide that out the way. So very straightforward, sort of simple in interface. So what I want to do is I want to get these uh, two computers to talk to each other. Uh, that would be good. Obviously, they're not connected at all yet. So what I can do is I can just click on the cable and you can see that my mouse has got this sort of like cable attached to it. So if I click on this one and then click on this one here, they're connected. Now, um, I've still got a cable uh, stuck to my stuck to my mouse. So if I press the right mouse button, it will just disappear like that. Okay, so I've got two I've got a cable connecting these two devices together. No server in this network, so this is sort of like a peer to peer network. And uh, this is just like a desktop computer, like somebody like a designer might have on their desk. Don't worry that it's not got like a screen attached to it. We, we, we don't need to. It's just a computer essentially. That's a, a networking end device. Okay, so. What we want to do now then is, like, we can click play, uh, and then it gets rid of the bar down the side, and then, uh, well, not a lot's going to happen, actually, because uh, we haven't uh, configured any of the settings. So we need to configure some of the settings. So if I go back to this sort of, um, uh, what's this? This is a hammer uh, icon. This is sort of like for the design mode. Uh, this little mode up here is if you want to sort of, like, write some text on the screen. So if I just drag out from text here, uh, you can just write um, some some text, and then you can drag it around, you can right click, you can make the font a bit bigger, you can change the color of it, uh, better not change it to that color because you can't really see it, there we go, you can drag it out, that sort of thing. So that's all the text option does. This floppy disk icon is to, to save your current um, network design, uh, open to open a network design or brand new uh, pa uh, blank page to start a brand new one, uh, like blank. Okay, right, so if I go to this one here, it's currently got the name uh, New Computer, and it's got an IP address, 192.168.0.10. So we'll be talking more about IP addresses over the next couple of days. Uh, we don't need to worry about changing this one here. Um, I could change the name to be uh, to be something else other than New Computer, but I'm just going to say use IP address as name. So it, it essentially uses whatever it shows here as the name instead. 
and we can see uh, every computer that's on a network has to have a unique IP address. So this one's 192.168.0.10 and of course because now I've ticked this box here I can actually uh, see, see that uh, there. And if I click on this one, uh, this one actually its default is the same 192.168.0.10 now that's not going to work because it's um, how how will um, we, we've got no way to uniquely refer to each one if they use the same IP address so that network is not going to work so I'm going to change this to 11 just so it's different okay uh, 25 would work 5 would work as long as it's something else other than 10 so I'm only changing the last couple of digits so then if I tick that box there, you can just make it, uh, you can see it makes it a lot easier to sort of see um, which one's which just by using this top option here. So that's an option that I use quite a lot. Um, I'll just better click save. There we go. Uh, and so it saves. And so I'm just going to go uh, uh, welcome. I call it welcome to Phileas. Or, oops, oh, Phileas. There we go. You can see I've got some of my other Phileas files in the folder there as well. Okay, so they've both got a unique IP address now. So when you're ready to actually test a network, you simply click on the play button. So there we go. Now, of course, because it's a very simple network, not a lot seems to happen. So what we need to do is we can, when we're in the play mode, we can click on one of these machines. And I clicked on the laptop, you can see that there, and it shows sort of like a de desktop for the computer. So this is like the, the operating system that's running on this computer. So if I go to software installation, it gives me a list of all the pieces of software that I could install onto this laptop. And at the moment, it's got nothing installed. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the command line because the command line is really useful just for checking connectivity. So command line is there. I'm going to apply the changes. And then it goes back to sort of like the desktop of this computer. Then if I click on that, it sort of like loads up the command line. So what I could do here is I could actually check the connectivity. So I could use the uh, the ping command, um, which is part of the ICMP protocol. So if I type ping 192.168.0.10, and you should actually see uh, this uh, the line change, or the, the cable change uh, to green momentarily uh, as I uh, press enter. There we go. So essentially, the cable sort of glows green whenever there's some sort of like uh, packets or data that's trans uh, being transferred, uh, like from left to right or right to left in this case. So we can see we got a reply from 192.168.0.10. Uh, so that's fine. We would expect a reply. It was a very basic network, of course. So I can close that window there, and I can do the same on this side. So if I go to this one, go to software installation, go to command line, click across, and click apply changes. I can, uh, I've now installed the command line, if you like, on that computer. So let me go uh, and just check the connectivity in the, in the other direction. And of course, it's going to work. 168.0.11. There we go. So it replies absolutely fine. Great. So if, and of course, if I ping something that doesn't exist, 192.168.0. Oops, dot uh, 34. then there is no computer with an IP address of that. So you can see here that the um, the ping times out. So we're going to get four times out. When you use the ping command, it sends essentially four uh, little uh, messages or requests saying, hey, is anybody out there with this IP address? There we go. Okay, so that's, uh, that's done. We've got a very simple network here. I'll just... Uh, uh, click the hammer icon again. That takes me back into sort of like editing mode. Then I can click save. Uh, just click save, just overwrite my original file. And just to finish off this welcome video, I just wanted to show you a bit more of a complicated uh, one. So if I go to uh, this number four one here, you can see here that I've got a, like a much more complicated network. So in, in this one, I've got uh, some computers are here, I've got some computers here, I've got three routers as well on this network as well. So this is, you know, a lot more complicated. Anyway, I hope that's uh, given you a bit of an overview of how Phileas works. And I'll produce some more videos and allow you to download some of these examples as well. So you can actually have a play around with them yourself. Okay, right. Uh, if you've got any questions, send me a message on uh, G uh, Google um, or uh, ask me in the chat. Okay, thank you.